the truck seems to be cranking a little bit slower especially early and with my gauges you know doing weird things I think it's time to address and uh, just check on some uh, electrical components so we've got battery cleaner here we've got terminal cleaner with these two new anti-corrosion things which I do need on the one battery and we've got a proper four gauge cable for the alternator to battery uh, a couple of years ago I replaced my cable with a homemade one and that wasn't supposed to be a permanent fix it's only an eight gauge wire or so maybe six gauge at the most this one should hopefully allow for less resistance in the system and that's what we need right now uh, we need to make sure the batteries are getting charged to the best of their ability now I know my truck does read about 14 volts which is normal so I think the alternators is doing its job uh, if nothing changes after this we could possibly be looking at batteries uh, I really hope that's not the case first thing we're going to take a look at is the cable ends this is my driver side battery this is the good cables uh, but you can see a bit of rust there we're gonna try and clean that up a little bit not a whole lot of corrosion on these this one you can kind of tell I've modified a bit to get it to fit tighter I don't like that uh, these cables will probably need to be replaced at some point uh, it's just a matter of figuring out where all the grounds go and you know since all these wires are combined into this one piece it makes it a little bit more difficult because you're probably going to want to move to a military style or, or some other uh, form of a and so this one is also complicated you got the big one here this is going to go to your starter this one goes somewhere there's a you know it's complicated this is uh, your crossover cable which is actually connected like this that's that's good you know that makes life a little bit easier this side is suffering from a little bit more corrosion and these two wires don't really look the greatest and here's your alternator wire that needs to be replaced with a thicker wire uh, this one actually looks okay you can tell it has been modified but this is a pretty clean cable what I'm thinking is I'm gonna end up definitely replacing the negative side because it should be relatively easy to deal with here I'm gonna show the removal of the alternator to battery wire there's a connector or a, a cover over it you just pull those two tabs in on either side and just pulls off and you can see down here where I've got my wrench and where the wire goes the red wire there it is a 13 millimeter and to loosen you pull towards the driver's side um, mine was on there quite tight but I was probably taking no chances with it when I did this you know roadside repair uh, a couple years ago here's the new black wire we're going to be installing and you can just see how much thicker it is than my makeshift repair uh, this is the proper size uh, wire that you want in there all right I didn't get to film much because it's about the thunderstorm but the terminals are cleaned you can still see a little corrosion but that's just on these things and it's stuck on there uh, but they are a lot better than they used to be and they're all tightened down I think we're gonna have a lot better connections this is the this was the bad side here and you can see we've got our new alternator wire you know solidly in contact there so I'm looking forward to see what the results are we will go on a test drive and see uh, how fast it cranks and if I get the gauge reset issue anymore uh, this could cure that so my hopes are high okay now we're gonna go on our test drive the goals of this test drive is firstly to fire the truck up and see how fast it cranks after further review I don't think my cranking was that much different than other videos because I do show startups in some of my old videos and I compared today's to those and it was almost the same so what we're really going to be looking for is the voltage there top left corner to see that that goes above 14 the crank was just about the same so we'll want to see that on its way 
looks okay. It's like 13.8 or 9 right now. We're going to take it out and drive and see how it does. And we'll also check to see that these gauges, uh, see if they stop, you know, resetting themselves every now and then. It only happens about once an hour, so I may end up driving around and have it not happen. But I'll report back. We're going to drive around for probably 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, and do about 40 miles in the process. So I'll get back with you then and let you know if anything happened. So the results of this was we may have picked up a little bit of voltage. Uh, right now it actually looks more like it used to, right around 14. But while I was driving it was up there at 14.2, 14.3 or so. And that would reflect a little bit of a gain. But really the, the wire is just a good upgrade because, you know, the... Uh, current can flow through there a lot easier than through a small wire. Um, as for the gauges, uh, they did reset one time, so that was not the issue, but I wanted to knock that one out before I ripped the cluster off and check the connections on the back of the cluster to see if they're corroded. Uh, that would probably be the next step. I may just wait till you know the weather cools off, get to fall or something, and, and do that. Um, but yeah, we drove around for about 40 minutes, and uh, they only reset themselves one time, uh, which is pretty normal. So, hope you all learned something in this video. Uh, I didn't get to film as much as I wanted to in the process because of the weather, but uh, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.